The next one is uh, vulnerability management and patch management policy. This confidential statement. So this is objective. Roles and responsibilities of the CISO will oversee the implementation and enforcement of this policy. And we have IT team and security team, the project managers and employee contractors. The scope will apply to all employees, contractors, management or company owners, as well as external business partners or vendors. Now for uh, vulnerability and patch management, so it applies to all the devices, corporate devices like firewalls, uh, servers, laptops, printers, and web applications, mobile applications, uh, physical server rooms, uh, development uh, environment assets, and all, all development, testing, staging environment, production environment. So this is a broad scope. But for sub to scope, we already have this test. So we have these many uh, uh, servers listed here. And these are the various devices. So out of scope means we don't have that in scope for sub 2. These are the software application details. And these are the details of the cloud for production environment. So we have AWS, Oracle, and Azure Cloud. We have uh, some customers sitting on AWS, some on OCI, and some on Azure. And let's go back to this document. So this is for scope. Physical infrastructure, we have HVAC, physical access control room, all, all these. So these are in scope. So for detailed scoping, we have the software scoping document. And for one bit in patch management program, so these are the key activities. Manage the asset inventory. So we should have a central asset list where we have all the assets listed. And what is the criticality of this asset? Is it critical or high uh, or medium low? And we categorize these assets, then identify vulnerabilities on that asset. We may do a VAPT or external audits. Uh, we might have a SOC team, which is a security operations center. They may report some kind of vulnerability to any of the attached assets. Then we assess risk and remedy the flaws. Now, this is systems. We have server class, which are all the servers, uh, workstation, all the laptops are employee or, or laptops or desktop. This is handled by the employees. Network devices, mobile devices is the basis, minor applications like PHP, Java, and major applications on the web-based applications. The first thing, we need a list of assets. And once we have the list of assets, example, we have a list of assets here. So we have all these desktops and servers. Then we cat categorize it as for the severity. So we, this is medium, this is high, this is low. Uh, so like this, we need a li central list of assets and their severity. So we have categorized the assets, then we identify the vulnerabilities. So how we can identify the vulnerabilities? We do security audits. So it can be internal team or it can be an external team. External means third party vendors. VAPT, uh, source code reviews on our source code, done by either internal team or external team, then penetration test. Uh, we may have uh, threat feeds from special interest group like OS top 10, uh, security or support groups, or risk assessment. While we are doing risk assessment, we may get some kind of vulnerabilities attached to some assets. Then incident response teams, like we have IT team, we have SOP team. And we may have some kind of discussion coming from projects. So we may get vulnerabilities from there. Now once we have identified the vulnerabilities, then we analyze or assess these vulnerabilities. So we have a CVSS scoring system. And based on this system, we have critical, high, medium, and low. So if it's a critical risk, so what's the definition of critical, uh, critical risk? 
So it have an extensive financial long term damage, long term brand damage, and these uh, these are the details. The impact could be extensive. Uh, it could impede the systems, so it's critical risk. So a high risk. What's the definition of high risk? Is uh, significant financial and brand damage. So in the medium and minor risk. So this we describe here. A no risk is a false positive. So this might be some of the critical risk like SQL injection or a remote code execution. A high risk could be a session management vulnerability impacting some less users. Critical may entirely affect the production system. An attacker may bring down the production system. It's critical. High, it is impacted only for some set of users. Medium, like cross-site scripting attacks. Low could be some kind of path disclosure or some kind of server information shared. Information, uh, like informational findings, uh, web server default page enabled or something, which is not that much critical or, or low also. But we should have that as the information noted. <clears throat> now, once we have identified and analyzed this risk, then we have to remediate or mitigate this. So, uh, that's on to remediation part. First, we should patch all these vulnerabilities in lower environments, which is development environment or SIT, and then we apply on UAT in production. So, vendor maintained systems. So vendor maintain servers and web application that is hosted on secure cyber gate network is on our company network as well as asset hosted on vendors network. So these are, have the same requirements. And this is vulnerability analysis process. Deployment, exposure, impact and simplicity. Okay. We have vulnerability footprint, deployment, exposure. So this is some of the terminologies the impact level and the description of the vulnerability. So we have uh, three types of assessment, qualitative, semi-qualitative semi -quali semi -quali semi and quantitative. So this is semi-qualitative, okay? Let me note it down. This is semi-qualitative. Okay, it's quantitative, semi-qualitative, semi, -qual semi -qual okay. Uh, this is uh, some of the things we can do. So it's qualitative means high, medium, and low. Semi-quantitative and quantitative, we must have some kind of numbers here. Uh, system and application patching. So we should have some kind of timelines. These are the SLAs. So if it's critical, well, we fix it. We try to fix it as soon as possible on the same day. But uh, to follow a process, it may take up to three days. And this is dependent on the actual SLA we signed during the project contract, the, uh, during the initial contract, okay? So this is just sample one. If it's a P2, we uh, at least take two days and five days to properly implement the protection. So this is high if you say it's high, but this depends on the project contract, okay? So these SLAs should be under the policy. The tool selection. So we may... Uh, select tool, but you should do some kind of due diligence before going for any vendor. For example, for source code scanning, we may use Sonar Cube. For penetration testing, we may use Perpsit Professional or Zap. But to scan uh, open source libraries or dependencies, we may use OWASP Dependency Check, which is an open source, or GitLab Dependency Scan. So we also have GitLab Sast and Dust. So the tool selection depends on company and the requirements. And it's the patch management cycle. We analyze the patch, test the patch, and then deploy. Okay. So remediation, operation, enforcement. Okay, and uh, so these are some of the vulnerability management and patch management policy related stuff there. So apart from that, we have employee training and awareness. All these are part of a standard policy template. Escalation metrics for vulnerability management and patch management. Mm, if you need any exception, you follow the policy exception form or document. 
and that's the conclusion. Let's set on to vulnerability management and patch monitoring policy. So if you have any of uh, any of the concerns or feedbacks, do comment us and we'll take it. Thanks for your time.